Hey guys, this is a really important lesson for beginners and improving players as well. Uh, something that I've noticed very often when teaching people under 1000 is that whenever, very often when, when they've got a piece that's being attacked, they immediately react to the attack. Okay, so react means you do the first thing that comes into your head because you think you have to, because you think you don't have options, right? But um, as you get stronger at chess and as you observe stronger players, you'll see that they consider far more options in every kind of situation, but particularly when it comes to attacking. So um, right now I'm working on a course in chess tactics for beginners. And as part of that course, I've been breaking down what can you do when you've got a piece that's attacked, right? And I've identified seven, seven different things that you may be able to do. There may be more, and there are certainly like subtleties within these. So let's quickly go through this list. And then we're going to um, pick a game with Nelson and um, use the list to, you know, with a, a case study game, okay? So the first thing that you can do, obviously, is capture the attacker, right? And sometimes, you know, somebody will launch an attack and not realize that they've actually put their attacking piece on a place, a square where it can be captured, right? So, you know, it, for example, I, I think I had a game yesterday where uh, someone put me in check, like with their queen, but I could just capture the queen, right? So the absolute most important thing is don't react stop tell the story of the board speak it out if you need to and then decide what your options are and then decide on the best one okay so you can capture the attacker not always but sometimes you can defend the target so you know, add <clears throat> one defender or if you're being attacked more than once add subsequent defenders if you can and say okay Come and get me. Yeah, come and, come and capture. I'm going to recapture. Not a problem. Third, obviously, you can move the target. You can run away from the attack. Okay, it's very common. Fourth, you can interpose another piece. And what that means is that you break the line of attack by putting another piece in the way, usually a piece of lower value. Um, sometimes, very often, you'll, you'll have like a, a queen or a bishop come in and you'll interpose by pushing a pawn. Okay, and, and that's normally called kicking, kicking the attacker away. Um, another option, fifth option, is that you can counterattack. Oh, by the way, on interposing, that only works with pieces that move in straight lines. Okay, so, um, and long distance attacks. So it can only work with bishops, rooks, queens. Yeah, you cannot interpose a piece in a knight attack because knights jump, and you can't interpose a piece. Uh, in a pawn attack, because pawns only capture one diagonal square, right, obviously. So counter-attacking. Counter-attacking is where you say, okay, well, you're attacking my pawn, or you're attacking my bishop, or whatever. I'm going to attack a piece of yours that's more important. It might be a higher value piece, or it might be a, a, a key piece, so that you have to respond to that, and you haven't got time to capture the piece that you're attacking. Okay. Another one which, which doesn't come up very often is you, you could even pin the attacker. So say that you, you, know, you could put like a bishop or a queen or a rook and pin the attacker to a higher value piece, king or queen, very often. And another option is to do nothing. And this is where this kind of calculation really comes in. So you say, okay, look, right, let's think this through. If my opponent captures that, then... What are my options, okay? And how does that scenario look? So that could be scenario A. Um, or if I move away, how does that look? Or if I capture their piece, what, how does that look? And which of these outcomes is better for me and worse for them? Okay, there you go. Seven ways to respond to attacks. So let's now take on Mr. Nelson with random color. So we've got black and Nelson's gonna play that, okay. And let's play I played the Karo Khan against him last time and we won. Um, I'm going to play e5 and he's going to bring his queen out. There you go. Okay, so stop. Rule number one. What is under attack? Well, the queen is attacking that pawn. 
Okay. So can I capture the attacker? No. Can I defend the target? Yes. Can I move the target? No. Blocked. All right. Can I interpose? Yeah, I could put my queen there, but I would lose my queen. So that's not an option. I could play f5. No, that doesn't look good. Can can I counterattack? Not really. I mean, you know, I could attack the queen, but still the queen captures the pawn. That's the whole point of the wayward queen attack. Can I pin the attacker? Nope. And is doing nothing an option? Not really, because queen's going to capture the pawn with check. So I've really only got um, one option, which is to defend the target. Now I've got different ways of doing that. That doesn't work because I would be in check. D6 is an idea, but that then blocks off this bishop. Right? So I think the best move is knight to c6, defending the target. All right, and now a knight has come out. Okay, so now it's my turn to turn the tables a little bit and I'm gonna attack the queen, and the queen has moved away, option three. And now, so what's defended, everything's kind of okay. I'm inclined to play d5, and that's actually a double attack because my pawn from there will be attacking the queen. And also, because this pawn has moved, yeah, I'm attacking queen and, and pawn, okay? So let's do that. This pawn is secure, we're okay. Now the queen has to move again. You see? So moving away. Now you have options. So this pawn is defended once, twice, attacked once, twice. There's no real point in attacking that. Uh, let's develop a piece and attack the queen again. This is fun. Okay, the queen has moved again. So all of these moves have gained me tempi, right? I have gained time. Okay, now, the this pawn attacked once, twice again, defended still twice. And so, this pawn is attacked once, twice, three times, and defended only twice. So I'm gonna push that pawn, right? See, so this is, it's under attack, but it's actually overwhelmed, okay? Three attackers, defenders one, two. So white could actually now capture that pawn for free. So options, I could move my bishop back to here. That would be acceptable, right? Um, I could, what else could I do? I could move my knight back to here, which would be a bit bad because I'd be blocking off this, this bishop. Right? I could leave the pawn alone, but then I'll lose material. So I think now pushing d4, Makes sense, because it's another attack, it's a counter-attack. Now the knight he has to move. Ah! There's another counter-attack, you see? Number five, counter-attack. So I'm attacking their knight, and they are attacking my bishop. Now, what, one thing you have to look out for in counter-attacks is, you don't want to allow the counter-attacked piece to um, move and cause damage. So, for example, if I could move with check somehow, right? M move my bishop out of this attack with check, then that's a forcing move. White would have to respond to the check and then the knight would be mine, right? So what I need to look at now is, is there anything evil that I can do with my bishop that will force black to res uh, white to respond and allow me to grab the knight for free? Um, another option is I could grab the knight and then that comes with tension between the queens. But I don't think there's much point in that. Um, or if I take and allow the recapture, then I can take another pawn. I rather like that idea. Look at the state that white's pawns are going to be in. I take knight. I mean, we, we might swap off queens, but that's fine. The, he takes bishop, so he's now got pawns here. Right, and then I could capture either of these two pawns. So I think that's quite good. I think I like that scenario. So can you see the, the value in just slowing down? Okay, so now I'm in check. It's only three legal moves, right? King takes queen, knight takes queen, rook takes queen, and clearly the best one is rook takes queen. Because it's getting onto a semi-open file in the middle of the board, that's all good. Right, now look at this. This is a classic Nelson blunderino, isn't it, really? So I've got a piece under attack. I've captured 
White's Knight. And Nelson's come back with a counterattack against a pawn. Because Nelson's gone full retard, as he does every now and again. So, options. I could run away with my with my bishop, right? But I don't need to, okay? My bishop is under attack. We are still in an attacking situation. You can see how many attacks there are in chess. It's all about attacks and, and what you do with it, okay? Um, I don't have to do this because I could actually capture a piece now with check. Completely forcing move. Check is the most forcing move there is. And the bishop's recaptured, okay? Had to get out of check. So there's no option to capture that bishop. Can't do it, has to get out of check. It would be illegal not to, okay? Now I've got ideas of tactics. My, my knight might come in here and target that, but for now, my priority is to uh, protect Bishy Bish. Now, if I come here, we might have an exchange there to leave me doubled isolated pawns. However, I'm up a piece, so let's do that. I'm going to invite an attack. Okay, uh, I got option of capturing a bishop if I, if I wish. But what I want to do is I want to get my king castled, so I'm going to move my bishop there. Okay, I'm, I am attacking the knight. Okay, um, I'm going to capture the knight because that's going to force the rook to recapture. Okay, well, okay, that's an in-between move. Okay, and now rook captures, now I can castle. Okay, so I'm up a piece. I have a spare knight that uh, Nelson's now showing an interest in, but that's absolutely fine. Um, the knight is defended. It's defended by a pawn, and it'll muck up my pawn structure a little bit, but I think I'm going to be all right here. Now, what do we do? I need to put this bishop somewhere good. So, what are the options? Okay, knight is under attack. Okay, now, moving the attacked piece is an option, right? That would, because the knight's pinned to a rook, okay? Now, if I get Nelson's bishop off the board, then we're going to be in a situation where I have a rook, a knight, and a bishop against two rooks. And I should still be all right there. However, scenario B, bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and then I'm I'm still up a you know a full rook so I think I think that's better so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about doubling up my rooks on the open file okay capture recapture now sometimes it's important not to recapture automatically as well okay Nelson's just fiddling about here I don't know what you're doing um, just drop back here put it on a dark square so it doesn't get in the way of this guy. Okay, now we're doubling up and occupying the open file. There's only one open file on the board. Okay, pawn is under attack. Can I capture the attacker? No. Can I defend the target? Yes. I've got a few options. Many options. That's even an option. That's even quite a good option. I'm going to do that option. You see? Consider all your options. It's not rocket science, guys. Not the rocket surgery, isn't it? Okay. Uh, I've got an attack here, which is a check on the king. I've got an attack here. Go to attack this pawn as well. Um, let's attack the king. Hmm. You can run, Nelson. I'm just going to play a6 now to add another defender to that. Or oh, well, you can do that if you want. I'm going to add a third defender. Look at all the defenders I have. Ha, 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 ha. I'm going to kick your bot. Right, here we go. That's one attacker on the pawn. The pawn is defended. Okay. However, if I put my rook here and then move my rook here, I've got two attackers on the pawn. He's going to have to do that, isn't he? Okay, he's coming at me with a, a pawn. Oh no, I'm so scared. Okay, simply recapture. Oh, this pawn's now undefended. Okay, well... Did I do that wrong? Did I react? I did, look, I should have captured with that pawn. Because now, this pawn's actually hanging. But there may be plans. 
Okay, so he's come down here. So he hasn't captured the pawn there. Now, what do we do? What do we do? I've got, I could put both my rooks on the seventh rank and then attack this. I could put both my rooks on the sixth rank and then attack this. It's just... It's too easy, Nelson. Okay. Now, here's the opportunity for a discovered attack should I move this pawn here. But I think pressure on the king is more important. The king can't go here. The king has to go now onto the side file. Now, could we be evil? Is there some evil to be done here? Like bishop here? No, that undefends the rook. That would be a bad thing. Uh, let's move the rook back and come after the pawn. This is known as playing with your food. Okay, I'm going to come back here now. He might come there. Ooh! Ooh! You devil! You see, this is the thing with our, our friend Nelson. You can't do that, mate. You're going to end up in a, a draw. That's no good. But it is the, you know, it's the best move for him. There you go. So there's a draw. So, yeah, didn't work out that well in the end. However, good illustration, I think, that you have options. That's the whole point of the video, right? There are seven things that you can do, including leaving the tension. Beginners tend to hate leaving the tension. You know, and there's two pieces that could capture each other, you know? Um, masters very often are a lot more comfortable with that because they'll consider all the eventualities and think, actually, there's no real benefit to me taking. The other guy's thinking, there's no real benefit to me taking either. So they just leave it there and do something else. Always an option. So there you go. If you do nothing else this week, just have this little checklist. I'll, I'll paste it into the, the description of the video, right? Keep that open and do that process, okay? Each time, every time there's an attack, which is a lot in chess, remind yourself, options, options, options and you will improve. All right. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you soon.